Scoliosis back surgery, what are the costs and what are some alternatives? There are different ways to treat scoliosis and different treatment approaches definitely offer different potential results through the treatment process that they're offering. All through scoliosis is not curable. In the majority of cases, we're looking at an uncurable condition. We know scoliosis is highly treatable, especially if it's diagnosed and treated early in the progressive nature of scoliosis. There are two main approaches to treating scoliosis, something that I call traditional scoliosis treatment versus conservative scoliosis treatment. Now, traditional treatment has its own conservative approach, but it's not conservative in the way I like to talk about it. Now, traditional scoliosis treatment involves really just not really treating the scoliosis until it becomes severe enough until what they consider surgery. Traditional scoliosis treatment really has three categories of treatment, something that we call watch and wait, something that we call uh, conservative uh, or traditional bracing, excuse me, and then something called surgery. Now, mild cases, normally no treatments recommended. They just watch scoliosis and see what's happening. And these are cases that are less than 25 degrees. And this is when cases can mostly respond to conservative treatment, meaning if you treat a small curve, you're never gonna have a more severe curve. But the idea is here, the curve is too small to do anything about, so therefore they just wait and see what happens. Unfortunately, we know scoliosis is a progressive condition. It worsens over time, and it can worsen from mild to moderate to severe and to very, very severe. But little is done to proactively progress or stop its worsening over time. And as curves moves, it moves, to, moves into sizes greater than 25 degrees, where they're between 25 and 40, they call this a moderate scoliosis. And then their conservative approach is what they call traditional bracing. And they put a brace on a patient and they only use this on a patient that is actively rapidly growing. And the idea is just, just to try to slow down the progression not super effective bracing. It's a very small group of patients they can use braces on, but once curves break 40 to 45 degrees, now they call scoliosis severe. So again, they do nothing when it's less than 25, between 25 and 40, 45, they call it moderate. They use a brace if the patient's growing. If they're not, if the curve progresses beyond 40 to 45 degrees, now they call it severe. And now that's when they consider spinal fusion. Now, spinal fusion surgery has its has its own set of risks associated with all types of surgeries. But since spinal fusion is a very lengthy surgery where they're using rods and screws to fuse the spine together, it can have more significant risks and other significant potential complications associated with the surgery. Spinal fusion involves infusing the curve, most tilted vertebra to the most tilted vertebra below. Now, if you have two curves, it may extend multiple areas. And these vertebrae become fused to now longer move. They don't no longer move or function the way they're supposed to. These rods are screwed to the spine and they're normally screwed to the spine throughout the entire length of the rod. So there's two screws in most cases um, in, in going into the spine to hold the spine to the screws. A lot of times the, uh, the discs and the soft tissues are removed and they use bone grafts in between the vertebra to fuse the bones together. So now the spine becomes fused. And so therefore they're trying to sacrifice movement and function for alignment. This can cost the spine in terms of its overall health, strength, stability, function, and more prone to injury. So there's a great cost to the health and integrity of the spine as a result of spinal fusion. And many patients will, will experience a significant loss of flexibility and range of motion. It may impact their quality of life. They may have more significant pain and discomfort as a result of the surgery. And it can lead to multiple surgeries over their lifetimes because all hardware has a life expectancy associated in somebody's body. So you can possibly looking at multiple surgeries. And if, the, if there's more complications in the future, normally they're looking at extending the fusion beyond the current length of the fusion, where we see patients that can have multiple surgeries, they can have a significant portion of their spine completely fused, which can be a very, you know, a, a weigh, a weighing on the person in terms of their health and longevity. So the conservative treatment in this manner, in this treatment model was using a brace to try to slow down progression during the moderate stage. That's all they really had. There was nothing to, to, in, in, to advise the patient to do before, be, before it became moderate, it was 25 degrees or less. And there was nothing to advise the patient to do beyond when it became beyond 45 degrees. So it was a very small treatment window that they recommend that they have their conservative model. The way I look at conservative treatment is that the reality is that many scoliosis can, cases can be treated non-surgically. And conservative treatment is acting proactively as, as close to the time of diagnosis as possible. So we treat curves when they're smaller because we want to treat curves when they're smaller 
smaller to try to reduce them so they never become severe. We treat curves beyond 40 to 45 degrees to try to reduce them down into the moderate stage to try to prevent, to prevent the, the surgery from ever happening. And then we treat moderate curves to try to reduce curves as well. So conservative treatment, in my mind, is trying to reduce the size of curve to prevent progression so you don't have to face the decision of surgery. So you can see our conservative model is much more encompassing, encompassing a greater amount of patients because we want to try to prevent surgery and surgery being only the last option. Now, when we look at conservative treatment options, it's more than just wearing a brace that's going to try to slow down the progression. We try to impact the scoliosis on every level. First thing is it's, it's a chiropractic-centered approach, and the chiropractic care is working the spine on a structural level, meaning not, we're not just trying to improve range of motion or decrease pain, we're trying to improve the size of curve by doing structural chiropractic care. We also use types of physical therapy. Now, they're not just basic physical therapy to increase core muscle strength or spinal strength. We're using asymmetrical physical therapy to help push and move the spine into a more corrected position. And these, as we push the spine into a more corrected position, this better alignment can now be uh, reinforced by something called corrective bracing. Corrective bracing is a brace system that's designed to push the spine into a more corrected position, not just trying to slow down progression during growth. Since corrective bracing is actually used as a corrective tool to help change the spine, we can not only use it in adolescents that are growing, but we can use it pre-adolescent, we can use post-adolescent, we can use it, even use it in adult stages. Think of it like corrective braces on your teeth. There's never an age that you cannot try to correct just the alignment of your teeth if you're using corrective braces of your teeth. We're using the same same concept, but we are using it in the spine. And we also use rehabilitation and home exercises. Now, the home exercises are customized for this particular patient to help do an asymmetrical rehabilitation pr program at home to help strengthen the new positions achieved by the office therapy, the chiropractic care, and the corrective bracing. Now, why is it important to treat scoliosis sooner than later? Because we know scoliosis is progressive. And as curves progress and as they get worse, and as the per gets bigger, it is harder to treat. And even though there's never ever guarantees with any treatment, but the sooner we detect it and the sooner we treat it, the greater chance of getting a, great, a better reduction. I always say the smaller, the younger the patient, the smaller the curve, the better the results across the board. As progression occurs, the spine becomes more rigid, it becomes less responsive to treatment, and, it, and as they become more severe, it starts affecting their ability to perform certain exercises and rehab that they actually need in order to get better results. Also, since scoliosis induces a lot of uneven forces to the spine and body, it can start causing pain and start affecting nerves and start affecting the body in a more functional level. So it's far simpler to treat scoliosis early before significant progression is made and the spines become more rigid and there's more postural changes. Everything's more difficult when the spine becomes big, when the curve becomes bigger. Muscles are more imbalanced. Again, there's more deformity within the rib and, and postures um, that are associated with it. There's more pelvic deformity. So therefore, treating these curves in a smaller size, you prevent all that from happening. So if we treat a curve at 20 degrees and we reduce it to 10 and say it was going to be a progressive scoliosis that was going to progress to 40, if I treat it at 40, I can never get it to 10. That's too much reduction. We normally will get 75% reduction. So we're at a 40 degree curve, the same person, if I were to treat it at 20, it got it to 10, that same person progresses to 40, maybe I only can get to 30 or 25. So I can never reduce the curve the same amount after it's progressed versus treating it before. So we always recommend treating curves as soon as possible. Now, unfortunately, let's say you do have a curve that's larger, it's in 40 or 50 or 60 degree range. Can we still treat curves there? Yes, we can. And our goals are to reduce it below surgical threshold so you don't have to force or, or, or think about the idea of having scoliosis surgery. So the best time to start scoliosis treatment is always sooner the better. The younger the patient, the smaller the curve, the better the results. Spinal fusion can straighten a spine can make a spine be straighter, but it does it in a very significant impact on health. It does it by sacrificing function, movement, by improving alignment. So you're improving alignment, but you're improving function. So it's training one problem for another, and the complications of scoliosis with spinal fusion can be very, very significant. Where conservative treatment works on trying to reduce the scoliosis in a more natural manner, where we're not restricting function, but preserving function, preserving spinal health, preserving spinal strength, 
and also restore improving alignment. So we're not sacrificing one thing for another. We're getting both things to occur at the same time. Now, normally, again, like I said, the smaller the curve, the better the results. So therefore we recommend, if you know you have scoliosis and you're looking at a conservative treatment option, we recommend that you seek out treatment as soon as you possibly can. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.